Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. My name is Susanna Predoswap. I'm the founder of an all volunteer nonprofit called Vanguard Culture that works to advance San Diego's creative industry workforce. Vanguard Culture provides quality arts coverage of San Diego's arts and culture community, professional development for creatives, and cultural events that bring diverse communities together and inspire creative collaboration across all industries. For more information, please visit our website at vanguardculture.org. Well, we couldn't be more excited to have Bridget Roundtree as our first featured artist for the art shop. Some of you may remember that Bridget had a beautiful art show installed at Vanguard Culture Headquarters Gallery, which opened on March, 6, March 14th, 2020, <laughs> two days before the world shut down. Instead of hosting an in-person reception, we held a discussion with Bridget and the show's curator, Kai Esri, via Facebook and Instagram Live. Today, we are very pleased to welcome her back and to give her work the due credit and attention that it deserves. Her two bodies of work, Suspended Landscapes and Valuable Content, couldn't be more timely as they address our human interconnectivity, the fragility of the natural world, and the inevitable breakdown of previously accepted social structures. The artist statement on her website states, making art is a way to create meaning, to question systems of thought, and to communicate relationships outside the limitations of spoken language. I engage art historical images as a way to point towards the ideas and philosophies that constitute a visual language, an integration of old and new, nature and culture, thought and action a revitalization of images as a generative possibility. I'm interested in researching how thought creates form and how the form becomes or manifests itself as an object. I'm looking at how an object suggests how we think, what we believe, and how we live. My work is an inquiry into the way physical forms and patterns become representative of what we know of ourselves, the relationship between the self, the objectified, and nature looking at the everyday world with the idea that we are not only passively interacting with the environment, we're actually actively thinking it. What kind of environment is built from the ideology of something specifically made to be consumed, bought, or sold? Using objects that are found, discarded, or deemed no longer useful is important in questioning the foundations of what is deemed valuable in contemporary culture. Ladies, the floor is yours. Please take it away. All right. Uh, well, again, thank you everyone uh, for joining us. And thank you again to Susanna and Bridget for inviting me um, along with Vanguard Culture today. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I was introduced to Bridget's work um, a few years ago and immediately loved it right away, um, thought, wow, there's something really, really interesting happening here that the type of work and the way she works really spoke to me. But it wasn't until I saw her work in person for the first time that was like <laughs> this amazing, like, oh my gosh. And I know I'm preaching to the choir here. I assume all of us are art lovers. Um, but you know, you cannot you just can't experience art on a screen or in a book the way that you can in person and in front of it. Like there's an exchange of molecules that happens when you're right there in front of an art piece. And I think that's super true uh, for Bridget's work. And um, that's one of the things that I really, really love about it. It's really um, delicate and intimate. Um, and it's just definitely something to be seen in person. Suzanne, I was so happy to see that you can zoom in when you're looking at Bridget's work on your website because I think it's super important to be able to see all of those details in her work. Um, and they're really, really wonderful. Um, I was lucky enough uh, to work with her. Like you mentioned recently, she was one of, I believe, 21 artists in Endangered, which was an exhibition that we hosted um, early January of 2020. It was curated by Danielle Deary. Um, so I have to give her credit um, 
for curating uh, Bridget into the show and giving me the opportunity uh, to work with her and to see her work in person. Uh, I think in times of loss and in times of anxiety and uh, political strife, um, that art becomes even more important. Artists are needed more than ever to offer different ways to view the world and different ways to translate the information that we're being pretty much bombarded with on a daily basis. Um, so it has changed quite a bit and it's brought me in you know, deeper relationship with you and Susanna as we're trying to figure out ways to continue and to remain vital and to be generative during this time. One thing that I always have been drawn to and love is when you, you know, walk by something and you think it's one thing, mm -hmm. maybe from a distance, but then as you get closer, you realize that it's another thing. Um, which is kind of the basis of mixed media. A lot of my work, what I'm researching concept conceptually, art historically, theoretically, um, is, is the way that I physically approach making the work. So the form mirrors the thought behind it. Um, and the basis of mixed media, uh, like in valuable content, is, you know, basically cut, a lot of it is removing something out of the image. So it's taking the visual image and looking at what that is suggesting, again, socially, politically, emotionally, who's telling this story, what is the idea behind it? You know, images are not innocent in that way. They are loaded with ideologies, biases, winners, losers, you know, all those structures that we live by. And so by removing a piece of it or um, interrupting what that original image was expressing uh, and putting another image in. So, and therefore you create a third meaning. So the work lives on in a different way. And um, I think that process of actually, you know, interrupting the image and I have a large, hundreds and hundreds of mixed media images that are cataloged. So you have to have many and then it's a, then you start doing visual analogies with them. So what does that change the context if I put this image in there, if I put this man or if I put this animal or this abstract landscape, what, is that, what does that do to that original image? And it is a process of, of translating those two images together to create the third thing, which is the basis of mixed media. Okay, so we're focusing mainly today on two of the series. Um, and while they have visual differences, they still definitely have that Bridget Roundtree fingerprint on them. Um, and can you talk about um, the difference in those two series? One seems to be much more planned out and deliberate. Um, that would be the valuable content, but correct me if I'm wrong. And then um, in your um, suspended landscapes, it's much more spontaneous. At least the landscape portion of it is much more spontaneous. Um, can you talk um, to us about how these two differing methods speak to the larger narrative of your work? Yeah. Um, valuable content, again, is I touched a little bit on it, is um, a mixed media based practice, which is precise. It's, you know, I have a really small swivel knife. Um, where the little blade will move. So everything has to be cut somewhat meticulously um, so that two images read together. So the idea is to make it one composition. So you're working with two kind of divergent images in that way. And But when you're making the final piece, um, I'm always looking for the composition to be balanced, um, to make sure it's tonally correct, uh, that the lines of the hair match up with the lines of this, of the coat. Um, so when you first walk by, you don't necessarily, like you were saying, you don't necessarily see the embedded image. That's the hope is that it looks like it is just one completed image. And then as you move in closer, you start to see that there's something else going on than what maybe you originally thought. Um, and again, and the way that I work, the, you know, the physical form the work takes matches my thought process of 
how I'm thinking about it. So it, in mixed media, it, is, uh, it lends itself to being political um, because you are interrupting uh, an image that has a very specific message, art historically or socially or politically. Um, it's a very immediate form, so I, it's found imagery. So I can use newspapers, um, magazines, postcards, um, all of these things that I use um, also become, uh, it's, a, it's a, an immediate form in that way. Uh, it doesn't cost a lot of money and, it, and you don't have to know yourself how to paint or draw, though it does, though it is helpful to understand the practicalities of making art and what you're working with, like form, tone, perspective, all of that comes in to, to, uh, to the work. with uh suspended landscapes was the thought behind that and what i was uh, interested in researching was chance so i became very interested in emergent structures and uh, researching forms that are always present uh and i found that to be really interested and i was also uh reading kind of new narratives on ecology uh where we as humans fit or are connected with the rest of nature um, and that there are these also systems and structures that are always present uh, that I wanted to visually translate that act into the work so it has that feeling of spontaneity because um, it's literally spilling different inks so I'll mix up different inks and tones and then it's a chance I spill them it it's, it's not, and then I respond. So the materiality of what I'm doing becomes really, really important. Actually, the ink, the water, I use sticks um, and scratch in a little bit, but it was also an interest in decentering uh, as, as a human. I think that's really important right now for us to understand, and I think we are getting a good taste of that with the pandemic, the fact that we aren't in control and time doesn't revolve around us, and we are not invincible in that sense. Um, and this work definitely is an inquiry into those questions of what are these, what are these systems and structures that are already present, that are not man-made, and do not follow rational thinking, or an intention of I'm gonna do this, so it was a way to decenter myself and really take that on myself and in my work of what 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 appears and how can I be in a very present relationship with it without having to you know kind of push it into form, but that the form is there. Uh, and then of course the uh, the mixed media and the human figures become much smaller in this body of work, and they're situated in a larger landscape um, where they're relational to what is going on. They are not the ones imposing the structure on, on the image or in this landscape or form. Um, they are a, they're enveloped by that, which feels timely right now because I, I, I do feel that way on a day-to-day -day basis. And again, the pandemic has definitely exacerbated that feeling and brought it to the forefront. What do you feel like the obligation of an artist is to address, um, say, hot button topics in their work, if they do? Well, I, there's lots of different types of art. Some art is not meant to do that, you know, uh, or not doesn't have that foot forward. Like within mixed media, I was saying that form lends itself to uh, being political. It arose art historically uh, to be political and comment on society, on the way uh, they were being governed, on the horrors of war. Uh, it's been used that, that way for hundreds of years, um, or a hundred, I guess. Uh, so the role for me is to translate um, what is being 
presented within a visual language that I feel is my job and I feel a, I guess a moral responsibility to um, comment on inequalities uh, that I see within a visual language. And so I feel like that's my job is mm -hmm. to comment and to offer other ways of seeing things. I'm putting this work out there and what do I want to support as a person and as an artist? What, what paradigms am I representing? What structures of thought? What, you know, racism, sexism, uh, also, you know, chance and spirituality in forms of, of um, being able to take something invisible and make it visible. It's called valuable content to point towards a content within an image that it is loaded and it does make a difference and it shapes who we are and how we see ourselves in the world. So you never directly point at it, right? You can't describe and you know, define love or beauty uh, or spirituality in that sense, but you can point at it, you can suggest, mm -hmm. you can offer something that's, you know, it's hard to talk about because it isn't, it's not a tangible thing in that way. It, it, it's in between material and immaterial.